Hey, welcome back to another episode of Can I Fly Here, our weekly segment on Coastal Drone Co. My name's Ian. We're going to be taking a look at random locations across Canada and figuring out whether or not we can fly the drone legally there, how we can do it safely, and how we can make sure that we stay in compliance with all of Transport Canada aviation regulations. This week, we're taking a look at West Edmonton Mall. We're gonna be taking a look at how we could fly a over 250 gram drone. So for this example, we're gonna be looking at the Mavic 2 Pro and what we need to do to fly that drone. So first thing we're gonna take a look at is we're gonna go through the site survey process. In general, and we'll have it up on the screen as I'm talking right now, the idea is that we need to follow Transport Canada regulations 901.27 which there's a bunch of steps that we need to go through to make sure that we're compliant with the site survey process. Roughly as we go on your screen here, I'm talking, it's gonna be the boundaries of area of operation, type of airspace, applicable regulations, altitudes and routes that the drone's gonna take off, land and depart and approach the area from, proximity of manned aircraft, so full-size airplanes and helicopters, proximity of aerodromes, airports and heliports, Location and height of obstacles, including wires, masts, buildings, cell phone towers, and wind turbines. And predominant weather, environmental conditions, horizontal distances of persons not involved in this operation. And making sure there's enough battery power, making sure that each crew member has been instructed, and that we have information about the nearest emergency equipment that we need in case there's a problem. So we're gonna start digging into West Edmonton Mall in Edmonton, Alberta. So we've got the mall. Um, we're gonna do a quick visual look at it from the top down here on the screen. So we've got the map. It's surrounded by parking lots, which is a good thing. Um, first off, because you can fly a drone over cars, but you can't fly a drone over people. As long as there's no risk of the people being walking around unprotected, then you've got a little bit of a working room there. How much working room? Well, if you're flying in basic, it would be a hundred foot horizontal distance. If you're under advanced, it would be 16 and a half feet or more, as long as the drone is certified for operations near people. Near people means uh, you can go closer than a hundred feet horizontally, but not closer than 16 and a half feet or roughly a car length and distance. So we need to determine what area of operations this location is. How do we do that? Well, let's go to the drone site selection tool. It's the NAV Canada or NRC National Research Council's website. Um, there is a new website called NAV Drone as well, but I like to start with the NRC site because it's quick and it's easy and it's pretty straightforward. So we're gonna zoom in on West Edmonton and let's find them all. Oh, it's right there. And we're not gonna go too far and we're gonna make sure that we've got it set to basic because that's our default area of operation. And there's a big red circle covering all of West Edmonton Mall. What is that circle? Well, there's a heliport at the Misery Concordia, Misericordia Community Hospital. So that's a one nautical mile circle, three kilometers. And what's one of the conditions of flying under a basic certificate? Making sure you've got more than one nautical mile away from a heliport. In this case, we aren't. So that means we've moved into an advanced operations environment. Before any other consideration, the airspace that we want to land or take off into is advanced. So we need to have an advanced pilot certificate and we need to have a drone that's approved for advanced operations. So what other considerations have we got in the air? So we've, we take a look at this. We've got the heliport nearby. We have another heliport on the west side of the Anthony Hende, and there's another heliport down in the university area for University of Alberta. We zoom out a little bit more. Well, there's Parkland Airport. There's the big international to the south, which is pretty far away. If your drone can get there, you've got some problems. And to the north, we've got Villeneuve, and then we've got St. Albert, and we've also got the military uh, training area at the north there in the base. So zoom back into what we really want to do. We need to define our area of operation. What do we plan on flying? Well, we don't want to fly outside the perimeter of the mall. We've been, let's say we've been asked to take some pictures of the mall by the mall. So we have permission from the landholder in this situation, right? So our ground-based permission is already taken care of because the mall has hired us to do some new promotional pictures of the mall. 
All right, so what else do we need to know? Well, we need to figure out where we're gonna take off and land from. Parking lot's a great spot. An even better spot would be the roof. If we can get access to the roof of the mall by the mall property, then we can stand on the roof. If we couldn't get on the roof and we needed to fly from the, the ground level, we would choose a parking lot that is something that we can set off like a cordoned area so that people aren't gonna be getting too close to the drone when it comes in to take off or land. Areas that we can fly the drone, while well, we know that we can safely fly a drone over the top of a center of a city street, because the, in most situations, there's not gonna be people unprotected immediately underneath the drone. And we go back to the 16 and a half foot radius for the drone. Uh, 16 and a half feet is a car length. A car width, if it's two lanes or more uh, on a city street, like all the ones that we see on the map here, it's fairly safe to assume that we're not gonna see people underneath our drone. We're gonna maintain visual line of sight at all times of our drone, and we're gonna make sure that any of these operations we, we have either as a low traffic period, so it could be Sunday early morning or uh, afternoon on a weekend that's not a busy shopping weekend, or middle of the week maybe when it's not super busy. West Ed's always busy, so you're gonna have to deal with that and figure out how you're gonna limit the amount of opportunities for someone to come close to your drone. If you can't, if it's a situation where you absolutely have to fly the drone over people, the drone needs to be certified for flight over people. Mavic 2 Pro is not. So what's that mean? You have to modify the drone with an approved modification that probably, well, it, it for sure involves a parachute in this situation. That drone would then be approved for a minimum overflight, say, let's say it's 100 feet, because the drone needs enough time for the parachute to open and deploy and protect the people underneath it. It's gonna vary based on the drone you fly, but there are gonna be some modifications out there that are approved and they carry that safety assurance declaration to allow you to fly over people. So, people dense environment, we figured out kind of some strategies to mitigate flying over people if we can. If we can't, then that's gonna be something that's gonna limit our opportunities to fly the drone safely. What else have we got to consider? Well, it's a very dense RF environment. Radio frequency interference is going to be a factor because there is Wi-Fi everywhere there and cell phone towers and probably potentially some cranes for construction. So these are hazards we need to start thinking about as we're going through the area. So let's go back to the cars and we'll kind of step through this. And this is a process, the site survey process needs to be formalized. You need to have a document that you carry with you when you're doing this. So you you fill this document out um, we have our standard operating procedures course that kind of goes through this and we actually have a framework that you can build your document from. But what it needs to contain in the document is everything that's spelled in the cars or the Canadian Aviation Regulations. So we've talked about boundaries, we've talked about airspace above us. It is a controlled airspace environment. So let's switch over to the site selection tool and we're going to, as we said, there's a heliport nearby. We also need to look at Nav Canada flight map and see what kind of airspace is in the area. So I've brought up Nav Drone, which is the online tool, and I'm gonna drop a pin right on the roof of the West Ed Mall. And it's gonna show me the environment that is there. Okay, so it's uncontrolled, right? It's at that location where we're not inside the Edmonton Airport control zone, and we're not inside any of the other airports. So let's look at the airspace there and we would the main concern that we're going to have for this location is communicating with the community hospital what are we going to need to do we're not going to need to requ request permission from nav canada but we are going to need to coordinate with the hospital and let them know that we plan on flying at this location and what's the best way that we can do this safely right so we want to co coordinate with the hospital give them a rough date and time that we plan on flying, figure out what our ideas of uh, operations are, and start planning out the flight so that we know where and when and potentially where a helicopter would be flying in and out of the hospital. Right, so the phone number is given there. It's, it's right on the screen here for the community hospital uh, and any other factors that we need to think about. So proximity operations, we've got another hospital on the other side of the Hende for the city or sorry, not hospital, but uh, this is why I like going back and forth between the site selection tool and nav drone. 
But if we switch over to the heliport here, it's the Edmonton City. Right, so basic operations are not permitted with the nautical mile. There's some details, information about it. So it's Charlie Charlie Echo 7 on the screen here. Right, so we can get some information from the Canada Flight Supplement. So what else do we need to know? We know that we need to contact the hospital and get some information and permission from them. We know that that's pretty much it for proximity for the location that we're looking at. The location and height of obstacles, while the, the mall itself is an obstacle, the people are an obstacle, potentially there are towers, there's going to be antennas for cell phone and Wi-Fi on the roof of the building, there's going to be potentially cranes for construction. The West Edmonton Mall is almost always in some state of con construction or renovation, so it's something to think about. Um, if we're to do it this time of year, right now it's winter, it's January, weather is going to be a factor. Is the temperature and precipitation within the limitations of the drone that you're going to fly. We're talking about flying the Mavic 2. It's rated for a minimum temperature. So you want to look in your manual and determine, is that minimum temperature going to be too, is it more than what the actual outside temperature is? Probably today, because that means that you can't fly it today, for an example. But the important thing to remember with this entire process is, this is not a, a comprehensive site survey. You're gonna have to go through, look through the steps that we're doing here on this video. This is more of a suggestion of the process, right? You wanna make sure that you meet all the requirements for 901.27 and work your way through that process. Um, at the end of the day, you need to make sure that the airspace above you is, is you are able to do it with the certification level that you have. So it's an advanced environment. That means you have to have a pilot certificate that's advanced, complete the flight review, and do your site survey. You need to communicate with the hospital and make sure you have permission and coordinate with them. You need to make sure that the weather is sufficient and that the drone itself is capable of doing it. Other things you would probably want to think about are setting the limits for how far away the drone will fly. Set your return to home altitude so that it doesn't smack into a building if it does fly back. You need to figure out a location that's going to provide you visual line of sight to the drone at all times. And you want to set a maximum distance and go through there. So we've looked at West Edmonton Mall. <clears throat> uh, from a Transport Canada perspective, it's an advanced environment because we're within a nautical mile of a heliport. From a land use perspective, as long as we have permission from the landholders of the mall, if we're hired to do a job for them to take pictures of the mall, then that's going to take care of our permission. We would just make sure that we have something on paper that provides proof of that permission so that if security is not aware of it, we would want to co coordinate with them. You also want to coordinate with the hospital heliport so that we make sure that our drone is not impeding with any of the operations going to and from the hospital. And we want to make sure that the weather is not going to be a factor. We want to think about making sure the drone doesn't fly over people or near people closer than what we're allowed to with the drone. And finally, we also want to think about if there's any permitting requirements. Um, now, this is something that's you're going to have to do the legwork and kind of dig through the process. But the place I always start with is if I do, I need a film permit for this location. Um, we're, we're in Edmonton, so we would go to City of Edmonton Municipality. We would start Googling for um, drone, aircraft, film permit, UAV, remote aircraft, RC, helicopter, airplane, anything that might trigger some keywords in the municipal bylaw search that would then determine whether or not you need a film permit. In a lot of personal operations, or if it's for your personal use, you probably don't. If it's for commercial use, there is a good chance you might. There might also be some considerations of a requirement for liability insurance. These are things that are prescribed not by Transport Canada, but by people that operate the area that you're flying, so municipalities or landholders. So this is uh, not a comprehensive site survey. The, the process that I'm going through right now is just giving you an idea of triggers that you need to think about things to ensure that you have a comprehensive site survey. As I've mentioned, you need to have this all written down on a formal document that meets the Transport Canada requirements so that you have something that you can refer to. You're also going to want to think about emergency contact numbers for all the different airports, uh, heliports or aerodromes that are nearby. If you have a flyaway, you need to be prepared for that and have the information to contact them.
So thanks for watching another episode of Can I Fly Here? I'm Ian from Coastal Drone. We've looked at West Edmonton Mall this week. As always, make sure that you do your own homework and actually go and do a proper site survey on the day that you plan to fly or the day before. Make sure that you've got all the permission in place. Make sure you review the weather, the airspace requirements, making sure that you can fly your drone safely and not over people or within the limitations of your specific drone. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about this, you can hit us up in the comments below or find us on social at Coastal Drone Co. We'll see you again next week where we look at another random location across Canada and start looking at what you need to think about for doing a site survey at that location. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.